SMT Nation, what's going on? Glad you guys could stop by for this video here on the channel. Today we're going to be looking at the cellular settings and the controls for the Google Pixel 6 Pro. So if you're looking into getting this phone or you already ordered it and you want a preview of what you can do with the cellular modem and what you could do with the settings, I got it all for you here today. So welcome, glad to have you and uh, subscribe for more content if you like this type of content and comment down below if you have any questions or you wanna see similar videos to this. Thank you. All right, so here we go. The first thing I want to explain is that this phone is going to default to a 5G setting. So the, the preset way of this thing being connected is by the 5G, which is the recommend setting to be on. So I currently have the Verizon, my Verizon SIM at my main line. Uh, so you'll see that it is running 5G top right hand corner, and that is DSS 5G, so it's using band five. But what you can do is, is you can control some of this, all right? So the way that you go about it, you can go directly into the menu by going to this icon where it says Internet Verizon 5G. You can hold it and it'll take you there, or you can go to settings, and then you can go to where it says network and internet, and that's where you can run things like the tethering and the hotspot, the Wi-Fi, and the mobile network, so you can access all the settings there. All right, so the nice thing about it is this thing is a dual SIM, dual standby phone. So you can have multiple SIMs on it, and it could be physical SIM or eSIM. Now, right now I have the physical SIM where it says Verizon, and then you can have different settings, right? So if I have multiple SIMs, but I want one SIM to do the data, and I want the other SIM for calling and texting, I can control that. I only have one SIM in here, my Verizon line, so it's doing all the lifting. All right, here's your hotspot and tethering. There's your airplane mode if you ever have to flash or having trouble with your antenna reception or your RF performance. That's what you could do there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to click on where it says Internet. And you're going to see there's some secondary settings and some things that you could do here. Here's your Wi-Fi toggle. Here's your network preferences. So if you want to have granular control of how it connects to Wi-Fi and public networks that are unlocked and available in other settings. Now what I want to do is I want to go to this setting here and it gives you all of the information about your SIM. You could turn SIMs off and on, whether it's physical or eSIM. It gives you your usage. And then, because I only have one SIM, it's gonna default the calling preference and the SMS. If you have dual SIMs on there, you can granularly select what you wanna do. Mobile data is on. There's your roaming setting, your app usage, if you wanna click on it and do it in detail. And then here's your data warning if you're on a metered plan, possibly, or you know, a semi pseudo unlimited plan with like 35 gigs of usage or whatever. You can kind of control some limitations there. And then here is the preferred network type. This is really what I wanted to show you guys. So the 5G is the recommended. I actually don't recommend 5G for everyone. If you're a Verizon customer and you're in a 5G ultra wideband market, you may want to have it on at certain times. But if you turn off 5G, you're probably going to save some battery life. So you may want to go in here and kind of on demand, turn it off and on. Now, if you're not in a 5G ultra wideband market, it may, may make more sense for you to just leave LTE on because you're not really losing any performance in most cases with DSS 5G with the N5. So in this case, you'll note that I'll see the 5G in the upper right hand corner, click on LTE and it automatically switches over into the LTE channels and signal. All right, so now that I'm there, you know, I can see that the LTE is on and the 5G is turned off. Now, this is potentially useful to some if you have a congested 5G network, a congested LTE network, and possibly 3G in a crowded area where like these channels are congested. 3G may work. I don't know. Let's see if the tower I'm on has 3G still on it. I actually can't find any 3G in the Cleveland area, so I'm not surprised here. Um, there's some other settings. Uh, automatic network select, you can actually manually choose. Here's allow calling over 2G, they're still doing that. Here's where you can control the APN settings for your carrier, and there's the, the Wi-Fi calling feature if you want to turn it on. I don't use it, but you can use it, and I would recommend the Wi-Fi calling being on just in case you need it. But uh, since I don't have 3G, I can go to LTE, and actually what I want to do is I'm going to just go ahead and wait for it to switch in, and then we'll do a speed test between LTE and 5G just as a bonus coverage for this particular video. So um looks like it's hung up a little bit. I'm going to go ahead and flash airplane mode. 
Looks like it, it is hung up. We'll reset it and we should be good. I'm kind of glad that this showed on video so I could show you guys what you can expect to see. All right, there's the LT setting. All right, so we'll pop out here. We'll do an LT speed test and then we'll switch it over to 5G and you guys can get your first taste of sub six gigahertz performance on LTE and the 5G DSS. So we're probably running some kind of combination of AWS, band 13, band five, of, or something of that sort. All right, so 27 millisecond ping, five millisecond jitter, 90 megabits on the downlink, and looks like about seven megabits on the uplink. Let's go ahead and go into Signal Check Pro and see what type of connectivity we have in terms of which channels and which bands we're on. All right, so I'm gonna go here, thanks, ask me later. And it looks like we've got two carry aggregation. We are on 750, so that's band 13, 10 megahertz. And the signal is decent for the 750. Uh, I'm not sure about the other carrier. I would assume it might be band 66. All right, so that's the LTE, 90 by seven. And I think what we'll do is we'll go back to the controls. We're gonna put it into 5G. That's the recommended setting. We should see a change. Okay, so the 5G icon is there, and we'll see if it's any different, and then we'll take a look at the controls in the Signal Open or the Signal Check Pro app and see what we got going on. I'm assuming N5. I don't think they're doing anything else. Uh, you will see LT66, so it is AWS, and this is going to be Band 5. So that's Band 66 and Band 5. You'll see that the... Uh, 5G setting did a little something for us of an advantage, and I'll explain what it is. So ping of 27 millisecond, jitter at 10 millisecond, no packet loss or anything, 57 down, and of almost 23 up. So why is this important? This shows a better uplink on the 5G. Everything else is negligible. In fact, we lost a little capacity on the downlink side, but the uplink is much better, and I see that quite a bit. I'm going to go ahead and slide back over to Signal Check Pro. You'll see it, it It does default to a different primary band, all right? It wants to primary band, mid-band, when connected to 5G. Uh, I'm not sure what the other carrier was that I was aggregating with on the last test with LTE, but clearly it is a slightly different configuration. So if you're asking me, what I'm doing with this phone is depending on what's going on and what I need to accomplish, depending on the performance, I might turn 5G on and off. If I want the added uplink, uploading content or live streaming, I might just have the 5G on. And if I'm just watching video or things are getting rough with the download capacity, it might be better to put the LTE on. So it's kind of nice that you get that on-demand granular control, which I don't remember seeing in the old version of Android. So this is running Android 12, and this is what you can expect to see. I'm still waiting to see if there's any carrier updates coming for this Verizon SIM when it's in this phone. And I will be doing more testing on this. I most definitely will. And I'm also going to be testing AT&T, Los Mobile, FirstNet, and T-Mobile on this phone. So that way you guys have a good idea of how each carrier performs on it. So over the course of the next week, I'm going to try to spend like four, five, six days with each carrier on this phone. And that way you guys know what to expect if you decide you're going to buy this phone. Or if you do buy it, and you want to know which carrier to put on there. All right, so there's a Fast.com 41 on the downlink for video. All right, thank you for watching. Give this video a like and a share. Subscribe for more content. Turn on the bell notifications. Appreciate it, guys. Comment down below your thoughts on the testing and all the settings. All right, check out the links in the description box for the Patreon page, the Twitter handle, my email. It's all down there. Thanks for watching. We'll see you all in the next video. Peace.